I've taken business classes and I've done, I was, I mean, I almost finished my business marketing degree. Like that was my major. Mm -hmm. And then I started this business and I was like, dad, I've learned more. It was like the first 30 minutes. And I was like, so I've learned more in these 30 minutes than I've learned literally all of my education from like kindergarten to now. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Southern Utah Safe and Vault. It's a one-stop shop, buy, education, delivery, everything you need with the safe or a vault door. Website is safesfirst.com. Their showroom is 1397 West, Sunset Boulevard, number 115 in St. George, Utah. Phone number is 435-767-7878. Hey guys, welcome back to the Derek Lake Podcast. We're here again in the vault. This is episode 103. Happy to be here. We're, uh, it's funny because we just recorded a couple days ago, so it feels like I was just here. But when you do it every week, I guess they kind of all run together. Anyway, we've got a local entrepreneur in here today, um, local soccer star. <laughs> uh, I, I just met her, and we'll kind of get into the story of how we met and how we know each other and what our relationship is going to be moving forward. So uh, today we have Azalea Dixon. Right on. You got it right. All right. I got it. (laughs) It's funny. We were talking about her first name and it looks like super intimidating, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Once you know it. Yeah. One of those, one of those things. So it's funny. So my, my son's name's William. Uh So my, I just called my wife for, uh, you guys don't know that, but, and my son was talking in the background. So my name's Derek. Uh There's a million ways to screw it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so my son's William, because I'm like, if you can, if you screw up William, like, yeah. How is there another way to spell it? Right. No. And so I gave him like the most like common, easy spelling name possible. And and now it, like I've always liked the name, but yeah. that's funny. That's why I named him that. He'll thank you later. He'll get to his 18s and be like, yeah, no one ever spelled my name wrong. Right. He can find his name on a keychain. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So it, since we're on it, has that ever bugged you or anything? Having a name that's unique I'm, like that? Sh- no. And I've, no. I've, I've, I've gone by Z since the day I was born. Mm. And so, yeah, it was one of those things where I didn't even really know it was that unique. And then like a few years ago, someone was like, have you ever met anybody else with that name? And I was like, I've never even heard of anybody else with that name. <laughs> I mean, Iggy Azalea is about as close as you get. And even yeah. that spelling is totally different. So, Well, in mine... I've met like two people my whole life that spell it the way I do. Wow. And so it's like just D-E-R-I-C-K. Yeah. So it's one R, yeah. no E-K. Yeah. Like, it's funny. I, I looked at it like five times and I was trying to create your contact name. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Because <laughs> I've never seen a spell like that. Well, so that's funny because when we named the podcast, it's the Derek Lake podcast. Yeah. And I, I kept telling Mallory, we went back and forth and back and forth on a name. And I'm like, I guess we just name it this because there's really no like theme we follow. It's just yeah. people that come on, right? Right. And but I'm like, it's gonna be a terrible thing to name it because no one's gonna know how to spell You're it. Gonna be looking up Derek Leg <laughs> like twelve different typos, right. like what? and like legs two G's, yep, not that, one. And yep. so I'm like, we're just missing on both names. But that is so funny. Uh, luckily, and I think enough people have known me now. Yeah. That have known how to spell it. Or if, I think if you spell it wrong, it still comes up when you search it. So Google, you got that? Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I've never listened to an episode. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Oops. Called out. Now I'm going to have to. Well, you better listen to this one. <laughs> Hopefully. Maybe I'll be like, no, I can't do that to myself. I already think my voice sounds weird. Um, so we're going to, we kind of go down a little bit of background first, okay. and then we'll just dive into what you're doing, why you're here, you know, how we met, all that kind of stuff. Perfect. Uh, so just a little bit of background, where you're from, maybe a little bit of family, and then what got you here? And then I'll kind of take over. Okay. Um, so I'm originally, I was born in Fort Worth, Texas. And then my dad decided to start his own company up north. So we moved to northern Utah. Um, and yeah, so kind of, I mean, growing up in Texas was great. If you're from Texas, you know, it's the best state there is. It's just one of those things. If you live there, you get it. If you haven't, you're a hater. And so growing up there, that was awesome. And then growing up up north was great too. It was, it's really, it's a beautiful place up there. And so I have five siblings and I have four sisters and one brother. And I mean, growing up, I think we spent every minute of every day outside barefoot, you know, just embracing our neighborhood and just being the chaotic neighborhood kids that we were. 
Um, and then I got the opportunity to come down here to Utah Tech and play soccer for the college. And it, it kind of my graduation year was the COVID year. And so things were crazy. Coming down here was kind of a nightmare because it was just like a whole first semester of like vigorous sprinting and no games, no soccer. We had to wear masks during training and it was crazy. So, but coming down here, it, it gave us a lot of time to get to know the outside scene in St. George because we weren't allowed to ever be inside and we were only allowed to do things with our teammates and like nobody else. And so we spent a lot of time in Snow Canyon and a lot of time st- Sand Hollow, any of the outdoor places. So yeah, that's kind of what brought me down here. And then from there, I just kind of woke up one morning and was like, hey, I have this interior design certification. Maybe I should just kind of dive into that a little bit more. And so I reached out to um, the previous owner of Interiors by Design. And I originally was just asking for an internship, actually. I was like, hey, is it all right if I dive on back in? And and she was like, hey, I'm actually kind of stepping away. I'm getting up there and I want to retire do you want to take over? And I was like, well, I think I, I'm pretty sure I do. And so I, I went to my dad and I was like, Hey, I have this really good opportunity. It's kind of crazy. And he said, if you want to step in the bonfire, let's step in the bonfire. And and it has been that, yeah. but it's in the best way possible. It's been awesome. It's baptism by fire. And, um, yeah. Like <laughs> definitely. Yes. So you guys are located right next to our safe store. Mm-hmm. So you're just what? three spots down yeah i think yep i think Um, so same building we're in right there on sunset by Mm -hmm. taco bell and all that um let's talk about that what's the what's the biggest thing that you weren't expecting that you learned coming into the business um maybe just some lessons that you've taken over um and we can mention you've got a pretty i I, in my opinion and you can correct me if i'm wrong a pretty decent mentor already built into the business so talk about some of that kind of stuff yeah so i mean i'm so lucky between um kaylin who was the previous owner she is like i mean she has all of the letters next to her name she has taken so many classes done so much um when it comes to interior design she really i mean when it comes to she's an encyclopedia for interior design and so from the get-go having that resource and learning from her i spent you know, just so much time just right next to her, just going through everything she does in a day and, and committing all of its memory, like just a human sponge of just knowledge. Yeah. And then between her and then my office manager, Melissa, uh, my bases are covered. Melissa is like the, almost the same as Kayla. And she's been with Kayla for a long time too. So she learned all the ins and outs. So that was probably the best thing. Um, coming into this was knowing that I was still going to have Melissa and I was still going to have Kaylin. Funny enough, I moved like next door to Kaylin without even knowing. And so I'm over at her house, you know, grabbing things, asking her questions, saying, Hey, and, and, um, just their involvement in this transition has meant the world. Yeah. So she's still not active in the business, but just available for questions and stuff. I mean, do you still reach out to her? Yeah. So uh, we're still in contact quite a bit. She kind of had to step away for some health and, you know, it just kind of happens as you get older. And, and I mean, she's been committed to this for, you know, 40 years. So it's kind of, yeah, she was just kind of ready to step away. And, and so it's been nice for her to have the stress taken off her shoulders, but I still, I'm still involving her quite a bit and she's finishing up some of her past clients and we're still kind of working in tandem, which is really nice. Um, kind of get the best of both worlds yeah. when I'm running the show, but I'm also like, Hey, Kaylin, tell me all this <laughs> stuff. Cause I don't know yet. So. Well, and then Melissa be in there and she has a huge background of interior yeah. design, but even just running that, not running that, but, but like just being involved in that yeah. business right. has got to be just a godsend to have her there oh, already. My goodness. Right. She, and you know, she, I could not give her enough credit on here. Cause it's like, same with Kaylin, but you just get into her background and it's, I mean, the design experience she's had, she was a a supplier, like she bought for suppliers. Um, and she just has so much experience with following trends and, and giving people what they want and has a total eye for it. Cause at the end of the day, you either have an eye for it or you don't. Um, and so having her on board and knowing how everything works, plus also having the design experience, it's, it's almost a mother daughter relationship right now. And and I would not have it any other way. That's awesome. Um, what do you guys do there? Kind of give me a roundabout. Like, yeah. um, what's your target audience? What's your target customer? What's your 
you know, your best customer you're looking for and how do you help them? Yeah. So, I mean, we kind of do everybody. Well, what we say is like our, our trend of, of kind of our customer, um, stereotype, I guess, if you could say is pretty much anyone looking to redo a home, build a new home, do a, you know, some sort of anything in their house that has to do with interior design. So we, we do everything too. So, um, off the top of my head, our, our typical usually falls in the range of ages 50 to 50 plus, just because, you know, that's when people have money. And so you get the occasional, like, I don't know, we've got a few 35 year olds that, that are coming in for us to do jobs for them. But, um, we basically will sit you down and get to know you a little bit, get to know your project a little bit, um, get some basic info, let you get to know us a little bit, and then we'll walk through kind of what you're wanting and kind of establish a vision. And then from there, we'll start diving into more specifics, whether that's, let's say you're redoing your kitchen. Um, we'll go ahead and say, okay, what kind of kitchens are you liking? And well, maybe you made a Pinterest board, right? Cause everybody's about that these days. Um, and so we'll see that Pinterest board from you and then we'll say, okay, so you're liking dark cabinets with light floors and gold accents and you want a farmhouse sink um, and you want your fridge to be hidden and you want clear story windows on top. And so from there, we'll kind of look at logistic possibilities, especially with things like adding windows. It's kind of like, okay, let's look at the framework of your house and make sure your kitchen's not going to fall on you Yeah. Um, if you do this. Uh, and then we'll compile very specific um, well, just specs for the whole project. So we'll say, okay, so you're going to get this dark flooring from this company and we'll have it shipped to you by this date. It'll be this much square foot. Um, and then we'll say, and cabinets are going to be this much. We'll outsource to this company and we run it all through us. So you don't have to, our clients don't have to worry about anything as far as, oh, well, do I need to call them and set that up? Or do I need to schedule this? It's no, 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 we've got it. We'll, we'll do it for you. Um, and I think that kind of makes it really nice for people because when you're redoing your house, like that's, that's stressful in and yeah. of itself. And you're going to have to live in like the, oh, and our water's off today. And, oh, and now we've got all this random, you know, the separations up and, and you kind of have to, oh, we have to stay out of the kitchen for a day. You don't need to be worrying about, oh, did that person come do the tile? Or are they doing it right? Did we pick out this right? No, no, no. We, we come in and we handle all of that for you. So even like the subs and everything that mm -hmm. you guys are, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. So yeah. I mean, I knew you were kind of like one-stop shop as far as like ceiling to flooring, right? Yeah. Drapes, everything. Right. And so, but I didn't, I mean, that's cool that, I mean, we built the house two years ago and so I'm sitting there going through my head of like, <laughs> gosh, we were running to like different suppliers and yep. tile and picking up tile at different places every day. And, wow. and yeah, I mean that it's a huge headache. Yeah. So to be able to just put that on one... It's, it's kind of like the safe store. We kind of do the same thing. It's like, hey, come in, pick your safe, pick your vault door, tell me who your builder is and what color you want, and we take it over. Wow. You know, and then we deliver, we install. We When wow. you move in and everything's done, we come back and show you how to work everything, right? So yeah. it's kind of like you're taking a lot more off people's hands than we are, but oh, <laughs> I, I, I get it. Like you're trying, you're trying to relieve that stress from the customer. Yeah, totally. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So yeah. yeah. So like, going through that that's that's probably worth as much money as getting all the design stuff you want is just having one person take care of it right and i mean we've tried we've tried really hard and, and we keep our prices very competitive with people just as far as design time goes um I, we're the lowest in st george all of southern utah i'm i'm willing to bet like guarantee that we're the lowest in nevada and arizona too just because those are high market places and people know that they can overcharge you. Sure. So we kept ours low just to really please the client because it's honestly really fun for us. And I feel like if I were to charge more, I'd be robbing people blind because it's too much fun. I'm over here like, this is the best day ever. <laughs> every day of my life. Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So it's like you're getting a kick out of it too while helping all of them. And, and so my wife and I, like we're not very design oriented, right? Um, like people walk through our house, we have nothing hanging on walls. Yeah. We have like the bookshelves next to the fireplace and TV that have some Perfect. stuff on it, but like Beautiful. nothing crazy. Right. Yeah. Like we're pretty min minimalist when mm -hmm. you walk through our house and people are like, dude, don't you like put a, like some art up or something? <laughs> and, and we just did a rental property out by Joshua tree oh, and wow. I had a, I'm in like a coaching group and there's an interior design guy like with the group. Yeah. 
And he was walking me through all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, don't you have this in your house? Don't you? And I'm like, no, dude, we ain't got a thing hanging on walls. Minimalist. Why would I need that? <laughs> like, we just have a long, flat, white wall. <laughs> it's perfect. It's awesome. You just get to imagine it in your head every day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's stuff that you would never think about. Like, yeah. going through, like, I had, like, a Zoom call with them for, like, an hour and a half. Yeah. And going through all of it, I was just like, dude, I never would have thought of that. Yeah. You know? And so it's cool to have that resource right here. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a couple other places in St. George, but walking into your guys' showroom, it's really, and like, I liked how you said you're getting to know people, Yeah, right? You bring them in and, you know, maybe you guys aren't the best fit for them or they aren't the best fit for you, but you guys are getting, to, it's not just another client, I guess is what I'm saying. It's not right. just another job. It's a person to you, Yeah, right? Yeah. And you're always going to have like a stamp in their house. Well, and I think that's one of the most interesting things. Like when I very first came to St. George too, one of my favorite things about it is that it's still small and it still has that hometown charm that I have missed from when I was in Texas. And everyone talks about Southern hospitality and man, it is real and it is amazing. And you, I came down here and I remember I was running on a trail and I will wave at people and I'm used to them not really waving back. And it's just like habit. You know, you give a little like what up when you're running yeah. past them and you're not expecting anything because they've got their headphones in. But I, I like gave a what up to this old couple and they like started talking to me. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like, yeah, let's talk. And so, and then all the time, you know, you're going places and people will actually wave at you and actually, um, actually give you the time of day. And so I think that that's another positive of our like the size of our company is because we only have me and Melissa and, you know, Kaylin that are doing this. It's, it's just so much more personable. So we take you on as a client and it's like, Hey, you're not just a number or like a name. And then all these random people are tapping in on you. It's like, Oh, we know you, we know your family. We know you by name. We're remembering where you live, you know, like in, in a not creepy way, just, just, in a, just by the way, no, we're She's just not peering yeah, through the windows. Right. right. We're just like, we don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But um, yeah, and then and we'll follow up with you afterwards and be like, hey, or we're friends with you on Instagram and Facebook, and we're like, oh my gosh, so fun that your daughter just graduated college, or it's just it's fun to to develop those relationships actually, and it's so much more than just what kind of couch can we help you pick out, you know? Yeah, you're very mature for your age. <laughs> I like just sitting here talking to you. I'm like, there's not a you're twenty twenty one twenty one. Yep, like there's not a lot of. 21 year olds that you can sit and have a conversation like this well i appreciate that i guess that it also shows like the baptism by fire you're willing to take right like i don't think there's a lot of 21 year olds that'd be like let's go yeah you know dad let's go right um talk about that little relationship with you and your dad and uh maybe like a little bit of you know growing up with him you said you're a lot like him so maybe a couple stories and then let's dive into like how he's helping you with this um some of the maybe procedures or whatnot in the business kind of talk about that okay so we yeah i mean from the get-go all growing up me and my dad have just been one and the same i mean even looks like it was to the point where we'd go places together and they started doing like schools where you have to show your id to check out your kid and they didn't even need that for us (laughs) because we'd look at them and be like i mean we got the same face like what do you want um and so even just yeah, I've always looked up to him too. And he's always been a really big role model in my life and just a super hard worker, but also very, he had a very balanced relationship with work, which has been, I mean, I have so much admiration for that now, um, being a business owner, just because even as a kid, he was always there when we needed him and like doing stuff for us. And and I'm sitting back looking at it now going, how did you do this? Because you were always there and you always made it work. And and I mean, he coached like my soccer team growing up, all my siblings teams, he coached, he was always just super involved. And on the weekends, like always had time for us. And, um, we, we've also always kind of just thought the same. And I remember one time we got in an argument about something and I was like 18 or we were doing something and we got in an argument and we both are very, like we're very logical thinkers. And I mean, there's almost, I, I, I want to say, I want to say that we're emotionless. We're not emotionless. We're not robots, but man, we are just so logically wired that sometimes it's like, Oh, there's like feelings sometimes, <laughs> but we will literally be sitting in the same room talking about something. And we're like, 
skipping words and and using random like we'll say the thing over there under the what's him call it and we we know what we're talking yeah. about um and we'll literally finish each other's sentences and thoughts and um it and it's kind of weird and but everyone I, else in the room's like the hell yeah, are you talking yeah, about yeah they're like what do you mean like how do you are you getting this all right you guys know what you're talking about that's great yeah. but um but yeah and and he's just his his whole outlook on this business thing was about opportunity and he said this is an amazing opportunity for you and and from the get-go though when i came to him with this i said dad this is what i want to do um and and just kind of all growing up even all in college i've had like 10 majors and so and i just kept switching like you name it from accounting to medical lab sciences to um childhood education like i've literally done everything and everything in between and i just could never really find my niche and then my dad when this came about, he was like, well, this is probably what you've been looking for and waiting for. And I said, I feel like this is what I'm, you know, meant to take. Like, this is the path I meant to take. Um, and it just felt so right. And even now, like I'm finishing school, but I'm doing really easy classes and I'm just kind of, oh, I got a degree, but that's kind of <laughs> all it is. Um, cause this is the future for you. Yeah, this yeah. is it. And I want, I'm like, I want to put up my all in on this. And he said, he said, this is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done for a really long time, but it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever done too. And I didn't, I'm learning more and more every day what that means, but it, it's just, I mean, there's just so much kind of going into more of like the business side of it. Um, the first, like, I've, I've been in charge now for a month and a little bit. And the first like f- four weeks were just spent with my head cut off. And I was just, okay, I would call him the morning and be like, all right, what do I need to do today? And it was like business license, insurance, like all these random, I mean, utilities getting switched over, taxes. I didn't know anything about taxes. <laughs> I was like, what? I still don't know much about taxes. I'm still like, Melissa how does this work um but yeah just things like that where it was literally me calling him every day in the morning and just saying do i have everything checked off or what else am i adding to this massive to-do list today um but i like the to-do list i'm that type of person that's like i want to come in i want to have things to do i want to be busy and i want to get things checked off and 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 doing them every day so yeah it's been an adventure it's cool that at 21 you'll have the opportunity that you have now right right and I think the coolest part about it is you have that mentor of a business kind of built in with your dad. Right. And you have that relationship that it sounds like you guys could just be real with each other. Yeah. Right. Um, have those hard conversations maybe, or, or you're going to, if you haven't yet. Definitely we have. <laughs> and then also having the mentors on the interior design side already built in. What a great opportunity. Yeah. It lined up too perfect to pass up for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I, I was funny cause I heard that, um, Kaylin sold right yeah and so I walked down there one day and I just assumed that she sold to Melissa right and so I came walking in and I'm like hey so you bought the business and she's looking at me and she's like no (laughs) and I was like oh well who did and you were around the corner yeah yeah. she's like she did yeah (laughs) and I was like oh that's what anytime we go anywhere it's like and I I'm a okay with it it's totally fine with me um especially because Melissa's I mean she knows everything I know you know um and so we'll go places and people will automatically kind of deviate to her. And I think it's the funniest thing ever because she kind of tries to like deflect back to me. And I'm like, no, like just let it it's run its fine. course. It's yeah. okay. We'll get the information we need either way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's been really interesting. Or like I'll talk to people on the phone and then I go in person. They're like, how old are you? How old are you? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm just, you're sweet. And I like just don't talk about it. <laughs> You're like, I'm 34. Yeah, just pretty much. I have like five kids. It's no big deal. Yeah, you know? Degrees yeah, left and yeah, right. Yeah, it's great. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, though, that I love about it is like, I'm not a college guy. Yeah. Right. And so to be able to jump into that mm-hmm. and what better way to learn it? Than, oh, my gosh. Than, and that's what I was kind of getting to with the mentors and stuff. Like, yeah. what better way to learn that business? the business structure, just right. in business in general, not even interior design, but just business in general from your dad. And then that from them, yeah. um, dude, like there's so many people that would, you know, give a right mm. arm to be in that situation. Well, and I always will tell people like, I mean, I say always, it's been like, I've been saying this for probably like five months, but, um, 
I, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for school. Like, I'm going to finish. I'm going to get a degree. But at the same time, it doesn't – it wasn't making sense. Like, I, I've taken business classes and I've done – I was – I mean, I almost finished my business marketing degree. Like, that was my major. Mm-hmm. And then I started this business and I was like, Dad, I've learned more. It was like the first 30 minutes. And I was like, so I've learned more in these 30 minutes than I've learned literally – all of my education from like kindergarten to now. Yeah. Um, and I was really, I wasn't even the only reason I really decided to kind of jump in on this. I had a friend who did, she just became a videographer and her name's Amanda. And she like, we played soccer together. And then one day I remember we were just sitting on the couch. She was like, you know what? I want to be a videographer and I want to do it for like pro athletes And I was like, dude, you should do that. Like, that sounds awesome. And she did. And she like literally picked up a camera, bought a camera, whatever, learned how to use it. And within a month, she was the school videographer and photographer. And within like six months, she was, she applied to so many like NHL, NFL, NBA. And in eight months, she got a job with Utah Jazz and is one of their videographers. Wow. And I looked at her and I was like, okay, I'm going to do that because- you skipped some steps and that's what I want to do. So well, and coming off that story, people are like, yeah, no duh. And it's like, yeah, but how many people do you know that's actually done that? Right. Like, obviously that seems like a pretty logical course. Right. But how many people have talked about it and not done it? Yeah. Like she she just like, and that's the thing about it is looking at her. I was like, she just like, she just did it. Yeah. I'm just going to do it too. (laughs) You know? Okay. Well, that's what we've talked about with the podcast. Like with, when Mallory and I sat down and kind of started trying to form all of this and what it looks like. And, um, she, she asked me, I'm trying to remember exactly how she said it. It was like just some business advice of how do you get started type of thing. Right. And she's like, and everyone just says you got to start. Yeah. And she's like, well, yeah, I know that. But like, and I'm like, you gotta understand like people that have businesses get pitched businesses all the time. Right. And people that like I get, pitched for like investor stuff or to wow. come in and do biz, you know, be, do the business side of it. That's actually how the safe store came about is that I was just wow. supposed to be the business side. And what happened? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I'm like, the point is, is if you, everyone talks about it, but who's going to actually put pen on paper, get right. steps, get walking, get moving, mm-hmm. making things happen. You know, it, it's so rare. Yeah. It's so rare. And I, I think a lot of it is the fear of failure oh, on totally. it, right? And it's it's so much easier to do your nine to five. It's so much easier. And I've done it. I've done nine to fives mm-hmm. and I've owned my own businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, like the less risk involved, the easier it is to do, which means the thing that have higher risk, less people are going to do, right? right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, man. Like, I guess my point is, is a lot of people have these ideas And nothing ever comes out of it. Mm -hmm. And so you get tired of having these conversations where you're like, dude, I know you're not going to do it. Like, it's a great idea, but I know you're not going to follow through. Yeah. You know, you're like, if you would, I'd love to be a part of it, but I know you're not going to, you know, to call your bluff. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, (laughs) Oh, not with Mallory. I knew she was in (laughs) Mallory. So yeah, Mallory's, was it your sister was living in the, where the studio is now? Yeah, before she moved to Hawaii, she was in the room you guys were in. Yeah. So. Wow. And so this is just like a bedroom. Wow. And so when she told me she was like gutting the bedroom and turning it into a studio, I was like, she's in. Yeah. Like, let's do it. Because that's it. As You take step one. That's it. Like, yeah. It really is that simple. Well, and like Mallory, like it's been scary at times, right? Like, I mean, you've had. Uh, yeah, probably 1800 times just today. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that, that, that's part of it though. That's yeah. part of all totally. of it. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool is like, like we check in with you five years from now, right? Yeah. And those problems that you are having now mm-hmm. are not problems in five. Like those are things, that's a Tuesday to you. Right. Right. But it doesn't mean you stop having problems. Yeah. Like it's just bigger or different problems. Right. And so that's you just, you just get <laughs> well, promising me a great future. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just that's kidding. just business in general, <laughs> but like the pressure you're feeling now on things yeah. will be the same pressure right. then, but you look back and you're like, man, I remember when I used to be freaked out about this, yeah. you know? And, and I mean, I've seen it so many times. There's things I go through now that I think man, this is just going to be one of those things. In five years, I'm going to look back. You know, like that's right. how I tell myself, like, keep going, man. Like yep. you've had these conversations before. This is going to be one of those things. 
that was super stressful for five months and now you're past it. And five years from now, you'll forget it ever happened. Right. Right. I mean, I don't know if you're old enough to realize that. I mean, I've got some years on you. I'll, I'll take your advice. I can, <laughs> I can like put that in perspective. And I'm like, yeah, I can't wait for that to happen to me. Because right yeah. now I'm still in like the everything. Ah. No, it, I mean, that's, that's the thing with business though. Is yeah. you, like you have to persist. Like, right. You have to keep moving forward. Yeah. And dude, there's, there's weeks that I'm like, screw this. I'm gonna blow it up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like my thing I always talk about, it's like, screw this. I'm going to go work at Del Taco for 20 yep. bucks an hour. Oh at my night, gosh. Right. Insane. And so, but it, then the next day I wake up and I, I mean, I, people that bring up politics to me or different things to me that like I can't control any of that. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I wake up every morning and I make sure my family's safe and I go try to grow my business. That's all I can control. A, that's B, all I do. and C. There yeah. you go. And, but it, I don't know, it, it'll be funny because we'll keep in touch and like years down the road, yeah. it'll be like, man, like I was worried about this and this, and now it's not that big of a deal. Right. right? Now, right. now you're pawning it off to, to Azalea Jr. Right. When you're, <laughs> well, and I'm thinking when your future podcast is like 86 million subscribers and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I was on an episode once. <laughs> Derek Leg, you spell it really weird. Yeah. Yeah. That weird spelling <laughs> podcast. Good luck. <laughs> well, it, it, and going into this, like coming in onto this too, onto the podcast, it'll just bring like people ask, what's the biggest thing you've got from the podcast? And it's network. Yeah, right? totally. And people that have wanted to come on. And I think it's, I still think it's weird sometimes. People are like, dude, I want to come on your podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> really? I'm like, dude, it's just us sitting there talking. <laughs> like, it's not that big of a deal, but, yeah. but to be a part of it, it, it is cool to be a part of it. Oh, and totally. think of the people we've had on, like we've had people from, you know, big money guys to, um, alternative health to, um, I mean, name it, like yeah. name it. We've had anyone, wow. we've had Marines, we've had healthcare professionals. We've had, uh, one guy I was actually just talking to him the other day, Arrow Smacky. He does, a um, the way I say it, it's always weird. Like he <laughs> battles self or, uh, sex trafficking like he oh, like cool. he goes out and finds people that are yeah. being trafficked wow and he's actually running for city council right now okay and um, so good to know <laughs> yeah i reached out to him and i'm like dude you need to come back on the podcast and talk about city council yeah also so, his name is cool i mean that, eros yeah i know wow. i know when he told me that the first time i'm like is that made up dude <laughs> yeah did you is this like a student yeah what like you're a you bad doing? a dude yeah. if that's really your name no, right yeah so, I mean, that is a cool thing that I'm trying, that I'm extending is like, yeah. now there's like this group that you've been a part of the podcast, right? Right. Um, I don't know. I'm not even sure where I was going with that. Well, I was and just like, thinking yeah. the network of it. And as I start listening to him and then I'll like see him, right? And I'll be like, oh my gosh, you're on Derek Lake podcast? No big deal. But I was too. Like, episodes, <laughs> 103, yeah, I own it. 103, you go, go listen. <laughs> Give it a listen. No, it's been a cool thing. And like in you, like people ask to come on. Yeah you were like pushing to get scheduled. And I loved that yeah. too. Like I was like, okay, this is cool. Like she really wants to come on. I did. Yeah. Um, I what else? What else we got to talk about? I wrote down some stuff. Uh, soccer, interior design, Dixie. I call it Dixie. You call it I Utah mean, Tech. But I mean, do I? I when don't you know. said Utah Tech, I was going to be like, you mean Dixie? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is I've been, I was there when it was Dixie and now it's Utah Tech and it's like. Mm, yeah. It's but, this weird switch uh, over. Everyone knows what you mean when you say Dixie. But if you say Utah Tech, you get the occasional like, what? Yeah. Like Dixie. And they're like, oh, okay. And you're like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to use that one, but all right. What else you got? You got any questions for me? I need to start asking people that because yeah. they were, I just sit here and talk to the guests. Yeah, I and mean, they don't think they can ask questions back. How do you get passionate about safes? Uh, it's money. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Okay. Um, so how safe started was it was a buddy that wanted to get into it, yeah. and I was like, dude, do it, do it, right? Like right. the conversation yeah. we just had, and he was scared. And I've one of my best friends is in a partnership in a business, oh, and wow. I kept telling him like dude, just do it yourself. Just do it. Like you don't need the partner. Just right. do it yourself. Right. And people like to share that responsibility with someone else. I think they mm -hmm. think it's easier. Right. Um, <laughs> it didn't take, so wrong. <laughs> it didn't take very long. I, someone told me the only ship that sinks is a partnership. Oh, and that's funny. That's pretty much what happened with us. So I came on, I, I, I invested all the money to start it. Yeah. I ran all the business side of it, got our you know, our LLC set up, business mm -hmm. license, got us uh, the lease, everything, all that. Wow. And then we were about 
six or seven months. Oh boy. And I had to kind of like within like month two, I had to like kind of step in and start taking over the store stuff. Wow. Um, our margins just weren't there. Prices were too low. Things that were getting sold were even being sold under that. Oh my gosh. And so I kind of had to step in and reprice everything. And every time I had to come in and do something, it just caused issues. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think we lasted like seven months and he wanted out. Wow. And so initially he was supposed to buy me out. Like that was the whole plan. Yeah. Like, dude, get you started, get you in the green, get you making money. And then you buy me out. Wow. And so he ended up walking. Well, I paid him a dollar. I think, he, I don't know if there like has to be a monetary like exchange yeah, when you buy so. someone yeah, out. For sure. Um, but in my mind, he walked. Yeah. And then I spent 52 cents on a stamp to mail him a check for a dollar. So. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of money right there. <laughs> I know. So yeah, so I, I ended up, we had a storefront um, kind of by Lip Tricks oh, on oh, the yeah. boulevard. Yeah. Okay. And then I moved everything into a storage unit. Um, I negotiated out of that lease. And then um, I was spending a lot of time on my other jobs. Like I have like five jobs. Wow. And so what do you do? Um, I have two contract mail routes is the mm -hmm. big thing because mm -hmm. they have to be furnished six days a week. Okay. So if someone's not out there, I am. Yeah. Um, so I was doing that a lot. Wow. So my day was I'd wake up at six. I'd drive out to Hurricane. Mm -hmm. I'd sort mail. I'd drive to Hilldale. Um, I would deliver them their mail to their post office and then deliver Apple Valley on the way back. Wow. And then I would drive from there straight to the store. I'd run the store from like noon or one whenever I got there wow. to six. And then when I left at six, I went home and I would, I build custom gun holsters. Oh my gosh. So then I would build gun holsters till like midnight or one. And then I'd wow. do the same thing like six days, six, seven days a week. Wow. And so I just didn't have the time to like yeah. man the store. Yeah. And so I ended up shutting the store down. Um, and holsters was actually doing really well for like the income I needed. Yeah. And so I was putting a lot of time into that. Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, um, I was like, I had the contract routes all had people doing them. So I wasn't out there as much. Yeah. And I thought like, man, I kind of want to open that store back up. Like I've been in retail most of my life, Wow. even though it's, it, I think it's a terrible industry to be in. <laughs> <laughs> and so people ask me, Oh, I want to do this. And I'm like, why? Like, no, you don't actually <laughs> <Yeah>. stop. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I want to go work sales or, I mean, sales is great, but like yeah. to own a retail store is so much more than what people think, I think. But, oh, yeah. um, but anyway, I wanted to open it back up and then COVID hit like mm -hmm. the same month I was trying to find somewhere to be. Oh man. And from, I mean, and you can ask my wife if people don't believe me, like from day one, I was like, is this really that crazy? Right, you know? Right. <laughs> and so, so I was, everyone's like, dude, you sure you want to be getting into a, a lease contract sure. and all this stuff. And, and I'm like, yeah, dude, if anything, fear kind of drives this industry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, so anyway, I've ended up finding the store, which I've talked about on other episodes, but, um, I was actually going to be across the street from where we are Okay. in those storage unit places. Yeah. And it's like a big storage area and a small office. Mm. And I, I wanted the opposite. Yeah. And I was going over there to sign the lease and I saw a leasing thing on yeah. our building. And so it's Shelly Haynes. So I called up Shelly and I was like, Hey, what do you have over here? She's like, they're FedEx FedExing me the key today. Come grab the key. Oh, wow. And so I went over, she opened up the FedEx envelope, handed me the key. Oh my gosh. I drove over, looked at it. And then I was like, this is, it's perfect, but we'd have to figure out like a yeah. number that makes sense for both of us. Cause I'm pretty cheap over in these places across the street mm. so we ended up making it make sense which i was blown away like i think it was meant to be wow and she's like when can you move in and i was like you tell i'll move in tomorrow like yeah. you tell me when i'm ready Jeez. and so yeah i just signed another lease we've been there four years now I think. when did that uh massive when did that massive safe the big yellow one oh when yeah did that come into play <laughs> yeah so um a lot of people don't know this and I, it's i'll just kind of set the record straight um <laughs> So Dixie Gun and Fish uh. is a gun store in town. I've had Jake Erickson on here a couple times. He's yeah. one of the owners down there. Cool. And uh, they had that safe there. Okay. So they're actually the champion and superior dealer okay. um, for like our area. 
Right. When I started that store, I was selling holsters in their gun store. Okay. And so I was like, hey, I'm actually doing this. I'm not even sure what it's going to be, but I'm going to bring holsters and safes in. Gotcha. But I'm, I don't want to compete with you with holsters, but I'm going to make them there in the back. Mm. Um, I may have a couple out on a shelf, but like I'm not really going to advertise them. Right. And I had some people bringing in like ammo and tripods and camo and like just be like a shooting store without yeah. guns. Gotcha. And so that was my thought. And then uh, Jake's like, well, dude, I've got some backstock champions and stuff, like just in boxes. Yeah. And he's like, do you want to take them over there to fill the store? And I was like, yeah. So yeah. we hauled up all of this stuff over. And I had like four or five Fort Knoxes at the time. And within like three weeks, we sold everything. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, dude, this is a safe store. Wow. And so that's how like the whole safe store thing happened it, there. They got the market for it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And uh, and it, with COVID and all that stuff going on. And then the government was just giving everyone 1400 bucks. Yep. Take that. There so you we go. were like, what safes can we make 1400 bucks? Yeah. You know? And, and so when we did that, Jake was like, dude, take that yellow safe over. Cause it was in their parking lot and they're in like a little cul-de-sac that didn't mm. have a lot of traffic. Yeah. And so we brought that over, which saved me like $700 on one of the monument signs. Wow. So it was totally worth it. Yeah. And now people know us as the store with the yellow safe, not yep. Southern Utah Safe and Vault. <laughs> well, and even like I'll when I, I'll use it when people are like, "Where's your store at?" I'm like, "Okay, so you're gonna drive right here, and and you'll see this massive yellow safe." And they're like, "Oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about." I'm like, "Perfect, yeah, right. awesome." <laughs> well, it's funny the people that don't know it, right? Like I'll have people come in, and I'm like, "Oh," and we'll talk, and I'm like, "Yeah." The, you, now you know the store with the big yellow safe and they're like what and they're looking yeah. around i'm like how did you miss that it's like literally i mean it's how like big 20 is that? feet tall yeah i was like that is like a <laughs> massive safe wow. i should measure it because everyone asks me how big it is and i have no it's idea it's gotta be at least it's I mean, tall it's gotta be at least nine i don't even know i'm like in my head yeah it's like 20 feet but i mean realistically i'm not good at estimating yeah so. yeah I, don't, I mean i've stood up next to it and i'm only i go like halfway up it that's I'm six foot so it's got to be a 12, 15. Yeah. Wow. I'm willing to bet it. Yeah. 15. I could see 15. And then it's on a trailer. So it's another like two feet off the ground. Yep. 20 sounds about right. Yeah. So, so anyway, so, uh, Tyne Segmiller and Jake Erickson, they own the locker room and Dixie Gun and Fish. Cool. Um, and we just have like a, a split worked out with the champion line and the superior line. So they don't own any of the business, wow. but I basically sell their inventory. Huh. Um, so it makes them look a little better cause they order more. Yeah. Um, I help store a lot of their stuff that they have on over, you know, cool. back stock. And then I also, I have a forklift and they don't. So yep. they'll bring the semis to me and I unload them all. Well, mm. Jake will usually come over, but yeah. like it's somewhere to unload. Um, at the sports store, they actually have a little dock. I think they've unloaded there before, but anyway. So I feel like the people that like, I don't know, you think about business and even coming into this, I feel like I didn't realize it's so much of just, are you going to make your friends? Because that's what you need to do. Yeah. And, and just like developing those positive work relationships and just kind of, I mean, coming into this, it's just you, you need business and you need connections and you pretty much only get to say yes to people for the first like long, long bit. Cause you yeah. just need any business is good business, anything you can get your hands on. So, I mean, right now it's just so many people that come in and you're just like, okay, let me just prove to you that I can be your absolute best friend or that right. I'm actually this great person. And so I think it's made me a better person because I'm like, okay, I need to be like top of my game. I need to like drive better so that if people see me driving, they're like, this lady is a crazy driver. No, they're like, oh my gosh, she drives in the lines. Good. But no, yeah. I, so we're kind of the same thing. Like we're not the used car salesman. Is that what I always explain it yeah. as? We're not like pushy, like right. at a number of times I've talked people into buying a lesser yeah. safe because right. i'm like dude i just don't think you need that you yeah. know like this is probably going to check your boxes and like having that relationship with customers mm -hmm. has put us i mean I, we're the number one safe store in definitely southern like utah the only safe store i know yeah. of, so good job <laughs> i mean there's one in bountiful that i don't know a lot about so yeah. I, I don't know if i want to say all of utah but right. um at least in our area yeah. and i think that's why like we're not we're not pushy. Mm -hmm. We're, we educate. Like that's the way I, I guess I usually put it, but we're friends with everyone. Yeah. You know, um, we send out thank you cards, like handwritten thank you cards. We follow up with everybody. We, wow. and I'm sure there's someone that's going to 
call cap on that. But you did not send me a thank you card. <laughs> I, I got no complimentary I'm pretty card. sure we do. I mean, some get sent back, so that's, that's nice. not my fault. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right. I I have been talking a little bit in high schools. I've talked like seven classrooms. Oh, cool. And one kid asked me. He's like, "Do you think that it's just?" cutthroat in business and in, in a small town. Yeah. And I was like, you know, on the lower level in the beginning yeah. level, it is. Yeah. But like, once you start gaining some traction and like you maybe had that built in like yeah, traction built definitely. in, um, I was like, dude, everyone's just trying to help everyone. Like yeah. once you kind of get to that level, it's like, Oh yeah, Derek will help you with the safe. Oh, right. Zelly will help you, you know, design all everything, yeah. uh, you know, and so forth. Um, so I don't know, dude. Business is a weird thing, though. Yeah, it's just if you can find the balance of like symbiotic relationship, it's it's beautiful. Well, you're gonna have to use smaller words. At the <laughs> just, <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I was, I was like, no, I definitely know you know what I mean. Did you see my eyes glaze yeah, over for a uh, second? Just no, um, hey Siri, what is? It? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying I can um, barely read, yeah. dude. You gotta take it easy on me. <laughs> uh, no, I know. Well, and it fits right in with the St. George feel too. Of this town is so much how personal, what can you be like? That's really what it comes down to. And so it fits in with the demographic. If you can be friendly, that gives you a huge leg with two G's. Just there you go. It gives you a huge advantage though, over everybody else. If you can establish those connections. Cause I mean, people come in and I'm like, Hey, this, this, and this. And then they're like, Oh my gosh, we're best friends. They're not going to go find somebody else. They're going to be like, Oh no, but we really like her. Yeah. And I'm saying the same thing. Like, Oh no, I really like you. Like, please let me help you with this. This will be really fun for us to do together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's cool about what you guys can do is because you are working with them. Right. Like you're side by side. We're a team. Right? Yeah. 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 I I don't know. I, I kind of had a little bit of that built in with our holsters. So mm -hmm. I kind of had some of that clientele that I knew were already going to come back to me. Right. Um, But man, like our target market, it's funny because it's not I don't even know if I'd say it's gun people. Yeah. Like we with everyone moving here. Right. Um, that's a lot of our business. People not bringing their safes with them. Mm -hmm. Like they may have a couple of rifles or something, but they've got cash, coins, yeah. gold, you know, like all these other things they right. want to put in there. Right. And so we've actually tweaked a lot of our marketing to be like, what do you not want to lose in a fire? What do you not want to have stolen? Yeah. Like we don't sell gun safes. Right. We just, you know, whatever you don't want to lose, that's what we're protecting. Yeah. So, but I, I do struggle with, like I envy you because like you have this like passion for what you're doing. Yeah. And like, I, I know a lot about safes and like, I like interacting with people. Right. And so the store gives me that. Right. But like, I, I don't know if I would say I'm like head over hills about safes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just dream about them at night. You're just like, wow, that Fort Knox, <laughs> man. Like I stay up at night, Beautiful. like reading, you yeah. know, all the different material. But right. I mean, like I've just done it for so long now. I know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like I would say holsters was the same thing. Yeah. I wasn't just like this diehard like holster guy. Right. It, but it brought in income and I like money. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm, I fight with myself. I'm like, is that enough that I'm yeah. not super passionate about it? Well, I mean, you're still young. You've got time for midlife crisis to <laughs> switch your plans up a little bit. <laughs> like you tell my wife, if she just go get another job, I could yeah, retire. <laughs> yeah. What, what does your wife do? Uh, she's a nurse practitioner. Okay. Oh, I think, yes, you mentioned that. Okay. I remember. Yeah. And so she's in a... Uh, trauma orthopedic wow. surgery is Respect what she to does her, man i, I like helping people but not like that if you hey let me tell you right now if you ever get don't call me <laughs> don't call me you just don't like blood or what i just i don't think i'd be very helpful yeah i'd be like i don't can you <laughs> put some rock it off it. <laughs> like i got a water bottle can, yeah no well, it's like medical people like that yep. and like military i'm like I'm neither oh of those things, yeah. and I'm glad that we have people that are. Me too. You know? Yep. Respect to you guys. Thank you for your work. Yeah. Like, she just Not did me. a... She went down to Honduras for a week and did oh some, goodness. like, medical mission type stuff down yeah. there. And so she took some pictures. I assume that's okay. She was yeah. posting them on social media, but... <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, I'm going to throw up. And, yeah. like, I'm not a weird, like, sick to my stomach guy, but... Right. Like some of the stuff, I mean, they're just like filleting people open. Oh my gosh. And I'm just like, dude, this looks terrible. Yeah. And there was one time she was, um, before she was in orthopedic, she was just in the trauma section and she was talking about this bypass they were doing and they were like pumping the guy's blood like around the room. Right. Like the dialysis. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you got to stop talking. I yeah. think I'm going to puke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's back in my uh, medical, medical major days, did a few, did a few rounds of that. I had to write like a 
20 page paper on um, traveling nurses and why it's a good thing for our economy or something. And so, yeah, I don't remember anything, but <laughs> I wrote it and I got an A. So that's yeah. good. But <laughs> I'm glad school helped. <laughs> yeah, really, really taught me some things. So what are you majoring in? What's your de- degree going to be in? So it's going to be in business marketing. And okay. so it's it's been kind of, I mean, I've always been the type of person, I think I've really firmly believed that business, like head of business, entrepreneurs, they all kind of fit a certain I want to say it's, we'll use stereotype for lack of a better word, but just kind of a mold of all in school. I don't think I've ever spent more than 30 minutes on homework per week. And that's just simply because I will be as efficient as possible. Just, I will get it done as fast as I can. And I'm able to kind of just, I like, I don't know. This is my one brag is that I got a 36 on the reading and writing portion of the ACT. And don't ask me about my math score. What's the highest? Don't it's thirty six is oh, the highest. Okay. So don't ask me about my math score because that really changed my average. But <laughs> so I'm pretty the, sure I ditched that day. Yeah, so I don't even right? know anything it's, about that who test. Who cares about that? Yeah. <laughs> well, but the reading and writing though, because I I'm very much, and I have to kind of stop myself when I'm reading sometimes because I will literally skip lines because I pick up on what they're going to say next, so I don't need to read all the in betweens. And so people will be like, oh you read that book really fast. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's because you could skip half of it. You know what's going to happen. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it's just, that's how it goes. But there's very much this type of person where, like, I was just always wired to a purpose. And if there wasn't a purpose for it, I wasn't going to do it. And so all this random busy work stuff that I had to do for school, I was like, I'm not going to invest all my time in this to really drill this into my head because I'm not going to need this in one week, like literally not even a week. And so to that end, this business marketing thing is kind of nice because it's a little bit applicable, but I've yet to have a class that out outweighs what I've learned actually diving in, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I, I say I'm not a college person. I'm, yeah. I'm not super against it. I'm even like starting right. to turn, like turn around my thoughts on a lot of this. Yeah. Like for what my wife does, like hundred percent, you should go to, mm-hmm. you should go to college. I mean, you have to get your degree to do what yeah. she does, but for a lot of things, I'm just like, yeah. but I'm also, I was like you, like, I just, I had to figure it out, you know, and I had a, some mentor, like my brother helped me out a lot with business stuff. He had had businesses. So mm-hmm. I'd like, he helped me set up the LLC the first time and the bank account the first time and those wow. things. And I've always bounced stuff off of him. I mean, I've been. I've like, I started my first business. I need to go back and look how long it's been, but I think it was 2009. Wow. I don't remember. Had to have been something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's the, it's for the mail route. So it's mm-hmm. like the one I still have. Right. And having him all those years to be able to bounce things off of has been priceless. Yeah. Right. And then now, like what's cool now is, well, I don't know if it's cool. Like I, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really ask him a whole lot. Like yeah. I have other people I ask now. Right. Um, more because like, I, I know his input. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious what other people's input is. Mm. And something you have to learn pretty quick is like, you can take all of this input and input and input, but at the end of the day, like you're the one that makes a decision. Yeah. Right. And I don't know. I'm cool. I'm I'm excited to watch your journey through it and see see how far you can take it. What, I mean, what is the dream? What's the, you yeah. end up having like Azalea's home yeah. instead of Boulevard home or what? Right, like yeah. what's the, I mean, so I've got kind of a five-year plan and okay. call me optimistic, call me gung ho, but man, I really think I can make this happen. So there's, and I didn't even realize I was creating a vision until like, I don't know, I kind of started doing this and I was like, Oh, I actually have like a very clear path I want to take with this. Um, and my thought kind of going into this was just, what are people missing with interior design? Like what, what's really going to make it better and, and really bring it to the next level? Um, and you look at like things like HGTV, which, you know, everyone turns to that when they're thinking about interior design. Um, and the really unique thing about St. George is that it's just barely starting to flourish and really starting to get people. And they're coming in from all walks of life and they're kind of trying to figure out, the ins and outs of St. George. And a lot of that has to do with design. There's things that people don't think about when you, when you do a home, uh, the humidity level, how's that going to affect my flooring? What am I going to have to do there to prevent 
my floors, my cabinets, my furniture from like warping and splitting. And there's just so many random things or window coverings. What am I going to need to do to block our factor so that, you know, the sunlight isn't damaging everything in my house. Uh, and I learned all this when I was, <laughs> yeah, like there's just, there's so many rabbit holes in a design that you don't, you don't get that on HGTV and you don't, you get that from school. Right. Um, and from like actually being in a situation where you have to like, Oh, I just learned from that or, Oh, I could have done this better. Um, being thrown in the fire. And so what I want to do is in the next five years, I want to start bringing on more designers and I want to bring in a team probably of about five. And I already have some people in mind of just my friends that I know do design or or other people that I know do design. And I want to bring them on and really start a big firm in St. George. The timing is perfect. It's lining up amazing. So that in five years, I start... And I want to kind of do like two years, bring on one. And then, you know, a year later, another one. And then... So I finally have this team of five in five years. And then just tackle St. George. And be... When people come to St. George, kind of like, you know, everyone knows Waco, Texas. That's where they do... Chip and Joanna Gaines have their, you know, their whole franchise. And so... Something like that. When people come to St. George and they're thinking interior design, they know interiors by design to run St. George. Um, and we just have everything covered and everyone just kind of knows us and, and uses us. And I mean, my hope by, I have a goal July 4th to have 15 clients. We're at nine right now. So, which is crazy. It's only been, you know, a month. And so that's, that's insane. Or I guess 10, I just got one when I was on my way here. Nice. So 10 clients. Um, but if each of us, cause you can do 15, that's like feasible, but if you, you don't want to overextend yourself, you know? And so, each of us has 15 clients. We're at that point running St. George. Um, and yeah, just kind of making it kind of boom and, and having to, of course, then transition to maybe a bigger store. And I mean, eventually let's talk 10 years, we're dropping our own line of, you know, d- designer things that we've got going on, our own design um, furniture, or our own brand, something like that. So all of that's just kind of in the works in the back of my head, but it's, I, I'm young. I got time, you know, so I got, I have things I can think about as far as projection goes. I'm in a good spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you think that, uh, you're going to be doing more new builds, more remodels, all of it. What's your, what's your thought on St. George yeah. specifically? Right now I really want to focus on, well, I mean, right now I'm focusing on all of it, but there's my like main, and I mean, maybe this is like business secret. Oh, but my main <laughs> secret right now is just reaching out to construction companies and just going straight to them and saying, hey, I'm really easy to work with. And I, I've i always been told in my life that I'm not tr- a very traditional woman, just in the fact of I really do lack emotion. And so there's a lot of opportunity when I'm not thinking emotionally at all. It's very rational. And I've noticed growing up and, and being so close with my dad that men appreciate that. And the construction world is mainly men. And so when I'm appealing to these workers and I've got everything lined up and I'm able to like deliver that logical thinking and that really rational, efficient, minimalist thinking, I've noticed that people kind of are like, oh, that's really unique. You know, I get the designers that are the other women and it's, you know, they're very like, fluffy and uh, and I'm over here like, no, nah, these are the hard, cold facts. And I've got all this information on it and all these details and I'm working fast and efficient. And that's really setting me apart from the other designers in St. George. Yeah. They'll gravitate yeah. to you for that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my, that was my question is like, do you think St. George is going to keep going? Do you think we're hitting a plateau? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like just, I guess like real estate in general, but yeah but building and everything. I think that it's definitely still growing. It, it's been fun to, to be a part of the college scene and the sports scene there because so much has changed since I got here. And it is just, I mean, the state is dumping money into our school and it, it pulls a really interesting demographic because the Northern Utah schools don't pull as much from any other States. Like Utah state kind of pulls from maybe like some Idaho, Montana, but I mean, UVU, BYU. I mean, my entire club soccer team pretty much ended up at BYU Um, just because they'll pull that local talent because Northern Utah is very developed when it came to sports. But down here, we're in such a prime location that we pull from California and Arizona and Nevada and and Utah. 
And then we're also pulling from Idaho and all these places where we're this destination spot. People think St. George, Utah, they think maybe Mars, you know, I don't know, um, Moab. But you just you think of this touristy destination that's in a really prime location. And I think that because of that prime location, it's ideal for people to want to live here. If you can handle the heat, which people from California can handle the heat, Nevada, Arizona, those can all handle heat, Texas handle heat. Um, and you're still getting that friendly Utah, you know, family oriented Utah that you get that you don't really find in other States. And it's still pretty small. So people are, they're attracted to that. So yeah, I see this place. I see it really, really growing. Yeah. I, I look at it and I think people are just nervous with the economy right now. So yep. there's kind of a little bit of a lull. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think St. George is going to blow up. Yeah. I mean, to me, like growing up here, it already is blowing up, yeah. right? Like not really knowing. I mean, I was born in Salt Lake. We moved out of there when I was five, wow. you know, and went to Cedar City for like a year, year and a half. And then St. George while we built our house in Washington City. And um, I mean, this is all I've ever known. Like yeah. we used to go shoot rabbits where Walmart is, oh my right? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's grown. I mean, there was one stoplight at Green Springs wow. when I moved here and that was it. And so seeing it now, I'm like, man, this place is blowing up. Yeah. And then people that come here from like actual cities. They're like, it's teensy. <laughs> yeah. They're like, this has so much potential. And I'm like, no, dude, we already yeah. blew up. <laughs> kidding me right now? I heard we're about to get a Trader Joe's. Like, man, Dang, we're pretty much up. the size of Salt Lake. <laughs> no, we got a Costco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. We have things. Well, I mean, even look at like Cedar City and like. We already passed them, you yeah. know, or maybe we haven't. Don't fact check that. Oh, we are. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I feel like we are, but that's yeah. probably just pride. Well, and but. I think we're in like a location too. And for like, are you guys doing a lot of stuff in like Mesquite, yes. um, Arizona? Mesquite. Like like that? And I mean, we tackle like that random corner in Arizona where like, you know, you pass through for like five minutes yeah. when you're driving to uh, Mesquite. It's like just long enough to get pulled over. Right. Right. So we will handle some of that. We have one uh we've i've done a project in um and i'm gonna figure out what it's called it's not phoenix but it's another one um in arizona but yeah more like farther in and it's not hard to do like i have a client right now who's in montana oh, okay um and so and it's it's totally doable and that's the crazy part people don't realize is everybody has a vision for their house you know or or for whatever they're designing whether it's a corporate space or a, a residential space they have a vision and they, they might not know it, but they very much do. And people will get caught up in, oh, I don't know if what I like is right though. And it's, no, 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 it is right because yeah. it's your space. So whatever you want, we can make it right, you know? And so there's little things that you learn, the little rules in design, like two thirds principle, one fourth principle, or, or this is how far this needs to be, or this is the code for this electrical outlet, things like that where, okay, I can help you with those little details, but you want to match up orange and blue, guess what? There's a way to do that. As crazy as it sounds or as much as it might not be on trend right now, those are actually complementary colors. We can make that work for you, you know? And that, yeah, it's, it's helping people realize that that's also part of the job is, oh, whatever you want to do, it's your place. Let's make it happen. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else you want to jump in here with? I mean, I thought you were going to be asking me about like aliens or like some <laughs> random like side hole. I was like, oh man, I'm not up to date with my conspiracy no, theories. People get, people get nervous when they sit down because they're like, so what are we going to talk about? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I'm like, you've lived 21 years. I'm sure we yeah, get an hour out of it. Right. Yeah. I had a good, God, it's been a good life. No, I, I, I think it's going to be a cool experience. Like I said, I can't wait to see five years down the road where you guys are at and, uh, I mean, I hope the best for you. We, I'm starting to get into some real estate. I'm hoping like some fixing and flipping type stuff. Um, and but some of it's not in St. George, so I'm glad to know yeah. that you can kind of do it anywhere. Yeah, hey, but, I love vacation. Love there you vacation. go. There you go. <laughs> All right. If you guys need anything, anything interior design, what flooring, carpet, blinds, cabinets, anything. Yeah, you name it. Yeah, come by interiors by design mm-hmm. that's what it's called right yeah and if you don't know where it is look for the yellow safe yeah there are a couple Ye- doors down yeah <laughs> cool well thanks thanks for coming on thanks for taking some time thank you um 
say we're at an hour so you've been here an hour and a half uh, it did go by so fast it you were does, right i literally it? think i've been here for 20 minutes yeah <laughs> yeah well i i had to put a clock up yeah because we had episodes go for like two or three hours wow i think we had one go for three plus hours oh my goodness and like i don't check my phone really right. my phone's on yeah. silence so i don't really think about it and i told mallory i'm like and it, it was it's kind of cool to see blue form is what her company's called like right. their growth because like we were just kind of i mean she had done podcasts before right but like yeah. as far as her own studio and all this stuff we were kind of winging it right <laughs> yeah so, Start, so we started we learning all these things right yeah and i'm like for me i talk too much we need a clock <laughs> yeah yeah for, yeah uh, yeah you could have kept going had me fooled that's yeah. why it's on that wall right exactly that's like why it's behind hours. you yeah well, it's like I told them, I'm all, don't put it somewhere weird. Just put it above yeah. the guest. So it's like behind you. And at then the top. I'm not like freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, I've only talked for like 20 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's how it is the first like 10 minutes. Yeah. And then it seems like forever. And then right. it just starts rolling. Right. So I don't know. Podcasting is cool. I, it's a medium where I don't have to stand in front of a thousand people. Right. Yeah. And it's just me and you. Yeah. And you forget all this is going on. Yeah. Right? You really do. Like you got lights, we got cameras, we've got. Action. mics in front of you <laughs> yeah yeah wow cool all right you own episode 103 so Sweet. um comes out on saturdays we'll share it Heck you can yeah. share it awesome um, all right guys that's it if you like the episode go oh do your social medias do you have anything people can follow you with yes i do so instagram is interiors dot by design llc and then from there you can find all of our other handles so Super, super convenient, kind of a one stop, make it easy for you guys. But is yeah. there a website or is it more like come in and sit down with this type of thing? Well, there is a website. So that's, and you'll also see it on the bio, but I'll tell you what it is right now. It's if you do like HTTPS dot dot slash slash www dot by com. So it's still the old, old name, which it's just a memoir to her, tribute to her. Yeah. So are shout you guys going to change that or are you going to leave it? It's all about SEO strength, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Learned that. So we are changing it eventually, but while one is being kind of constructed and the SEO is kind of switching out. So that'll be it for a while. But yeah. yeah. We'll mm-hmm. mention that too. Our boy Tyson. Oh my gosh. That does our marketing. Tyson, He's the one that guys, linked to this. Found local <laughs> marketing. I don't, if you need anything, I swear to you, go to Tyson because if you want someone to make your head spin listen to him <laughs> talk you through things for about 10 minutes you'll be like i'm just glad you're doing this and not me that's how i am with him he's he's amazing he's like we should do a b c and D. i'm like dude just do it yeah like, like whatever you're thinking if you need to know how to word awesome. something maybe call me but other than that just knock yeah. yourself out yeah yeah he's pulling things out of his ear like oh yeah we're just gonna do this this and, that. and i'm like that's great awesome yeah. hands off you go because I, I mean without him i don't know if this would have happened oh my gosh right i mean yeah. like i came over and met you but yeah, that was about it. I mean, I don't go around like I don't have a T-shirt that says right. I have a podcast. Come on it, and you now know? You, that's what I'm getting you for Christmas. Actually, as a thank, <laughs> thank you, you for this, I'm going to get you that. <laughs> How do you save some podcasts? You what go. about you? <laughs> All right, guys, go follow her on Instagram. Go stop by the store. Tons of stuff. Even if you're not, if you're just bored, man, come swing by. Say hi. Say hi to both of us. Heck yeah! All right, episode 103. We'll see you guys next week. There it is. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>